I just get nervous? Heck no. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the fourth, is this the fourth? I think so, yeah, the fourth episode. Fourth episode of the Unspoken Podcast. I am Tiffany. And I'm Sarah. And yeah, this episode is all about, well, dying, dying. well. <laughs> um, yeah, it's such a concept in mm-hmm. Christianity. Um, a concept I think that people think of as a little bit too heavy to talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. Which is another um, reason we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unspoken. Um, but dying well, because as Christians, we're called to die. Mm-hmm. Um, both figuratively and literally. Um, so we're going to talk about what that looks like a little bit. Uh, what really inspired this to begin with was we got a little short sermon bit from... Um, Eric Ludi, he's a fantastic pastor, um, and he did a video called Dying Well, and that really inspired us to talk a little bit more in depth about that and get some scriptures on it, mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about that today. Um, yeah. In the Bible, we hear a lot about what it is to die, um, die to ourselves, pick up our cross, um, and it talks a lot about dying for the sake of Christ. So, um, Tiffany, tell me a little bit about what you think it looks like to die for Christ, die to ourselves, and die well. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, first, before I answer that, one of the other things I wanted to say is, like, that sermon for sure um, is what made me think, oh, this is a good concept mm-hmm. to talk about. Yeah. Um, but hugely just because I think we both related to it so heavily. Mm-hmm. Like, I related it to it so heavily because it's... Like, this exact concept is, I feel like, the main thing the Lord's been teaching me over the last, like, year. Honestly, even just my entire life, but especially the last year, has very much been this concept of suffering doesn't have to be what we think it is in our world. Um, It doesn't have to be something we run from. It's actually something we can embrace. Um, And dying... For Christ is a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're gonna die anyway, right? So <laughs> the death rate is a hundred percent. Unless you're why not right, die Elijah. for Christ? <laughs> Unless you're Elijah, he had yeah, to die like, at some point in time. Well, no, right? God like took him up. He didn't die. Oh, God like took him up not on dying, a chari- chariot. Right. Yeah, no, he it's was just like dying. He just, just came up. Pew. Yeah, okay, so unless, unless you, <laughs> in that case, the rest of us, dying rate is like 99.9%. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, just to throw that in there. I just love the concept of, like, Jesus just being like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, we've got to make this at least somewhat lighthearted. I know, exactly. Really dying topic. is a really heavy topic um, for a lot of people, so, yeah, you know. It definitely is for us, because it's, it's something it. for both of us that has been... Yeah, heavy, um, heavy thing on our lives. Um, but I think there's actually so much freedom in realizing that it is beautiful to suffer for Christ Mm -hmm. and it is actually beautiful to die for him. Um, yeah. So wait, your question was, what does that look like, right? Yeah. What does, um, dying for Christ, dying to ourselves, dying well in general, what does that look like? Yeah. So I think, first of all, and this is something, we're going to link the video that we were talking about um, in this video, um, because it really is, like, and he says it almost even more powerfully, but um, one of the things he goes through is the list of, let's look at the people who were closest Mm -hmm. to Christ. Let's look at the people who came immediately after him, who followed him, who actually walked with him. And who he said to those people, pick up your cross and follow me. What did that look like for them? Like, how did they die for him? And most of them literally died. So, yeah, what what was that? And I have the list here. Um, and if you go through all of the apostles, plus some, you go through all of Jesus' apostles, and then there's some of John's. Um, and the disciples. The well. disciples, yeah. So... Stephen was stoned. 
Philip was crucified. Matthew was slain with the sword. James, the brother of Jesus, was stoned and clubbed. Mm -hmm. Matthias was stoned and beheaded. Mark was dragged to pieces. Jude was crucified. Bartholomew was beaten and then crucified. Thomas was thrust through with a spear. Luke was hung. Simon was crucified. John was <laughs> boiled in oil, mm. survived, and then was exiled to Patmos. And then Ignatius was John's disciple. And Ignatius was told that he was going to be fed to lions in the morning. And this was his response. I care for nothing of visible or invisible things so that I may but win Christ. Let fire and the cross, the companies of wild beasts, let breaking of bones and tearing of limbs, let the grinding of the whole body and all the malice of the devil come upon me, be it all so. Only may I win Christ Jesus. Wow. He was so willing to suffer because they all had something that most of us don't have. They knew how valuable simply knowing Christ is. Yeah. And they looked at Jesus and the suffering of this world and said, anything if only I gained Christ. Now, was Ignatius a, you know, personal acquaintance with Jesus? Um, he would have been around during the time of Jesus. He was one of John's disciples. But certainly so, not as close as he, the disciples. We, I don't know. He might have met him, but he definitely, like, he didn't, uh, he walked with John, mm -hmm. who, of not course, Jesus, John, so. like, set the way for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And John's disciples were incredible. Like, they were, I mean, John was proclaiming the Messiah. Like, mm -hmm. he came to prepare the way for the Lord. So, John, and John, of course, John was martyred. Um, John was beheaded. Um, so, obviously, John was preaching Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, but he wasn't among the twelve disciples, so he didn't know Jesus quite like they did, and even he himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way he spoke, yeah. the love that he had for Jesus, the yeah. the adoration. I mean, to be fed to lions and just say no, but I'm I'm gonna be with Christ. Praise God! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah! No. <laughs> Take me to the lions. <laughs> I think sometimes, I think that's a really good point, because I think sometimes we think that this is a faith for the apostles, mm -hmm. that this was a faith for the people who knew him. But the reality is you go down the line and you look at, you look at other countries, you look at missionaries, you look at people who have been martyred, you look at people who have gone to the slaughter mm -hmm. for Christ. They are there. There yeah. are people who are willing to lay down their lives for him because they they have that thing. They have that thing that gives them peace. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is the endurance of suffering. That is, it's, <laughs> I think people think that the concept is that we just, suffering doesn't affect us, we just don't care. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. It's that I love him more. It's not that it doesn't hurt. It's that the joy of him outweighs the hurt. It's that I would be willing for anything if only I get my everything in him. And to do it all over again for the sake of getting closer. And One of the Christ. things I've said a lot recently to a lot of people is... Last year was the most painful thing I've ever gone through, and I didn't think I would survive it. But I got closer to the feet of Jesus than I imagined was possible. I experienced something that I don't think many people get to experience. And if I had to choose between going through the hell that I went through last year for the rest of my life, 
or giving an inch on that process that I've gained, it's not worth losing an inch. I wouldn't give it up. And I pray that I keep, I keep it. I'm not willing to lose it for anything. And I'm willing to go through anything to gain more of it. That's what this is. That's what, that's what they had is this immovable desire for Jesus. This unquenchable thirst to love him and be loved by him and to know him and be known by him more. That's everything. Is that desire. Mm. That creates endurance that creates the ability to go through the most difficult circumstances and call it gain um the life of paul has been such such a strong just like comfort to me um and a strong like relation to me i know we've both related heavily to a lot of his words mm -hmm. Um, there's a passage specifically where he talks about, like, dying is gain. Um, mm -hmm. I know that's one of your favorite passages, so do you want to talk about, about one for a minute? Yeah, so in Philippians 1, um, I'm going to actually quote 120 through 21. Um, there's a lot before this, but specifically this passage. Uh, Paul says, as he's writing to the church in Philippi, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. We were actually talking about this a little bit, I think a couple weeks ago, that specific verse. Um, and... We, we were just talking about how incredible it is, like the difference that the contrast that Paul talks about between to live as Christ and to die as gain. Um, he talks a lot about how he's torn between the two and he doesn't, he doesn't fully know which one he wants more because to live, he can live for Christ, but to die, he will gain Christ. He will gain communion with Christ. And, um, I don't know, I just, I really related to that because I, I feel that. I feel torn between the two. I don't want to live here because I'm separated from God on this earth. I'm separated from Christ. Not fully separated, granted. I mean, I have him, I do, but I want to be in heaven with him. I want to sing with the angels to him. I don't want to be separated by a sinful world. You know, or separated by my sinful nature. But also on this earth, we have the ability to be close to God, you know, while also bringing other people to him. And we get to proclaim the one we love. Exactly. And we get to, we get to proclaim our testimony, Amen. our story, our everything that God has done in our lives we get to proclaim that for the saving and the salvation of someone who hasn't seen that side of God yet who may have been abused in a church or may have been led astray by Christians that didn't truly know Jesus and truly couldn't be a Christian a Christian to be a Christian means a little Christ mm -hmm. and unfortunately a, a lot of Christians miss the mark on that they don't know what it is to be a smaller version of who Jesus was. And so we, we hear a lot about people that have turned so far away from the church because they've seen Christians abuse the faith. And I myself, I was abused when I was younger and tried, had scripture turn against me yeah. all the time. You know, and it took me until I was 15 when I really saw God moving in my life when I was prayed over and he took away my, uh, uh, he took away OCD that I dealt with since I was eight years old. And it was very, very difficult to deal with. I couldn't, I couldn't perform normal functions. I would hide in a room for four to eight hours daily on average. 
And when I went to a church, it was the day of Pentecost, I went to a church and they prayed over me for that. And almost all of that struggle that I had was just gone that day. And that's when I fully started working towards a relationship with God. But a lot of people don't don't have that experience. A lot of people walk away from the church and they don't fight for that relationship. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, you know, they struggle with what they've seen from Christians that didn't know how to be a little Christ. So that's what we're here for. We are here to be that example. And that's why Paul, I believe, says he's torn between the two because... He wants to be that example to other people, but also for his own sake, he wants to be in the presence of Christ. He wants to be in the presence of God with the angels singing and worshiping in heaven. But we're called to something higher while still on earth. Yeah. So I just really love that passage yeah. because of that reason. Yeah. Thank you for sharing Heavily that. relatable. <laughs> yeah. I think that's really powerful. Um, obviously I've known those parts of your testimony but mm -hmm. like um no it's really really powerful to remember the calling that we have mm -hmm. um and there is like there is such a reason that we have this longing one of my favorite quotes um by C.S. Lewis is he says it is proof that we are not made for this world since since we have we have a longing that this world cannot Quench, which is mm -hmm. proof that we were made for another world than this. Yep. And that's so true. This world will never satisfy. Um, that's a concept we've talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a concept that I've had a lot of people almost be worried about me for because I have said, like, the things people talk about, like, enjoy the little things. Mm -hmm. But the little things that bring most people joy and give people reason to get out of bed in the morning will never get me out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much I love my job. I don't care how much I love coffee. Like, it's not going to get me out of bed. Because I can't go watch a sunset and have it erase mm -hmm. the things that have been said to me and done to me. It won't erase the rejection and the abandonment. Um, but Jesus, that gets me out of bed in the morning, mm -hmm. because I know at the end of the day, I win Christ. And no, I'm not living for this world. I'm not living for the little things here. I'm living for heaven here. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things I've been realizing is like, Yes, I have this longing for heaven. I have this longing to die and be with him. Not in a morbid way, but in a, like, I'll be more alive kind of way. And I long for that. But I want that longing to happen here and now. We're, we're to call heaven down. We're called to die daily. Not just when we die to die well. We're called to die well every day. To be immovable. Mm -hmm. And our love of Jesus every day so that we can endure with patience. Because to die is gain. But we don't get to choose when we die. Yeah. And so every day that we're here, to live is Christ. To die is gain, but to live is Christ. And just like you were saying, we get to bring that identity here. We get to be Christ for people who, who don't know him. We get to show him. We get to carry the identity of our Lord. And we get to follow in his footsteps. And live in the image of God. And his footsteps were trailed with blood. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, yeah. it's this ever enduring of saying suffering is gain. Mm -hmm. One of my other, like, a favorite passage of mine that I just, oh, it's just, it's heavy, but it's so beautiful, is later on in Philippians, right after he's talking about, you know, to live as Christ, to die is gain, I'm torn between the two. He says, 
in Philippians 1, um, 28 or 29. For he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now here I still have. This is a man who has suffered probably more than any other human on earth. Anyone can bear. In 2 Corinthians, he gives a list of his sufferings, and it's like really long. Like the dude who was shipwrecked like five times and <laughs> yeah. was yeah. with count, I mean, he literally says, with countless floggings, imprisonments beaten with rods three times, shipwrecked three times, lost at sea, in danger everywhere he went. Um, yet he, after that, talks about how much he boasts in this. He says, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Praise God for the suffering that shows how incapable I am. Mm -hmm. Because it shows how strong he is. God can work through our humility, but he can't work through our pride. Amen. <laughs> and no, our pride hides it. Our, our strength comes from our humility. Yeah. When we bow ourselves down and surrender and submit to God, because we have hit a point, we've hit a rock bottom that only he can bring us up from. That is when we are most humble, and that's when he can make us most strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. Mm -hmm. No, it's um, it's weird. There are so many parallels in Christianity of things that don't seem like they can be true at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, but it really is true where, like, to die is life. When I die, then I am alive. When I am weak, then I am strong. When I am humbled, then I am made confident. All of these things that seem like parallels, but work so beautifully together and show his strength so perfectly. And yeah, one of the biggest things I'm seeing is like, let me boast of the times in my life that I was so broken. Let me speak of those things because they show how impossible it is that I'm standing here. Mm -hmm. And that shows the power of God. One of the biggest things I'm realizing is those of us who get it, who love him, who have a beautiful relationship with him, it's not that I'm special. It's not that I am stronger or have better faith. It's that I've seen God. And I can't go back. It's that the presence of God is so freeing that the moment you experience it, it changes everything. The reason I read my Bible every day isn't because I'm like, oh, I need to be perfect and look perfect to everyone. Mm -hmm. It's because I truly can't get enough of him. I didn't even understand that until I would say probably the beginning of this year, maybe the very end of last year. A lot of the time I would just get up and force myself to read the Bible because I was like, I know there's something I need to learn from this, you know. And then month by month, this year comes and I get to the point where I don't read my Bible daily because I feel like, you know, well, there's something I can learn from this. There's always something to get out of it. It's a book of wisdom. It's a book of knowledge. It's a book of understanding. It's the word of God. I read it because I can't go a day without it. Because I love it. Because yeah. I feel close to God when I read it. Yeah. And because I miss him when I don't. Yeah. And it's not, I'm this perfect person. Yeah, it's not that you're better. Exactly. It's, it's, that he it's is. his longing that he has put in my heart for him. Yeah. And I can't be separated from him. Yeah. I can't do it. No, it happens in every aspect of your life. Like, I truly, like, hate the parts of me that are prideful. I hate the sin in my life mm -hmm. because every time 
I can feel my heart like a, a fleshly desire, sinful thought or a prideful moment. It hurts. It physically mm. hurts because I feel that separation. And it's like, no, if this separates me from the one that I love, let it be cast away. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, this song, Give Me Jesus. Oh, one of my favorite song. songs. It was my uncle's favorite song. Love that song so much. And this line is just, this is the song of my heart. You can have all this world. There's nothing here I cling to. There's nothing here I hold to. Because the reality is I've lived losing everything. And I would do it again. And we'll die gaining everything, so. (laughs) When I was the most broken I have ever been and had lost more than I could fathom losing, when I had lost everything. I lost my home. I lost my job. I lost my family. I lost my future. I grieved the children I was planning on having. I lost every single thing that was a day-to-day in my life. And that is when I found everything. Because I found it in him. It's not that I was this good religious person who was like, ooh, I'm gonna read my Bible every day. No! It's that Jesus said, you're mine. And he showed me. And he showed me how much of a blessing suffering is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a concept. It breaks my heart that people don't get it. We are moved by such trivial things. We're moved when we don't have enough money in our bank account. We're moved. We're mad at God. We struggle when our cars break down. The apostles weren't moved when they were being ripped to shreds. This is another thing um, in that sermon that just hit me so hard. Is yet they were not moved. They were still preaching the gospel on the cross. I think it was, um, oh, which apostle was it? It was... Um, uh, it might have been Jude, or maybe it was, no, I think it was James, who, while he was on the cross, was preaching. He was, he was posted on his cross, he was crucified on the road, where a bunch of people were traveling. And so he was there for days, I think it was two or three days, continuously preaching the gospel. He didn't die. And finally they were about to take him down and when they and just let him live because he wasn't dying and when he heard that they were about to take him down he was like okay jesus take me now and then he died but he waited until he could proclaim the gospel to enough people as he was on the cross and then as soon as it was like okay we're gonna take him down he was like no 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 i want to go be with (laughs) jesus now But to have that endurance to say, I will suffer Um, if only I proclaim my Lord, if only he gets glory out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, Lord, get your glory out of me, no matter the cost, no matter what it takes. And like, don't get me wrong. It's not this idea that we should want to suffer or seek out suffering or, you know, cause ourselves unnecessary pain or drama or like. I'm not saying you should stay in a situation that's hurting you. Um, And I'm not saying you should sit in your suffering. You should seek healing because healing is when you endure. Healing is where you you are given the ability to endure suffering. And it means that no matter what they do to me physically, mentally, emotionally, it does not break me. Amen. And so no, you shouldn't be suffering the way that the world looks at suffering where you're depressed. You should be rejoicing in the suffering. I am the most happy and healed 
and like genuinely like I mean you can look at me like people the people who are close to me know like it doesn't make sense like the switch that's happened in my life how genuinely happy I am that's not possible that is not possible but like and it's and it's not because my situation's changed it's not because suddenly the people who hurt me apologize and they haven't hurt me anymore or because I'm not affected anymore I don't have issues anymore like no, it's genuinely because God has healed me. And I'm willing for it. And I've put power in it by saying, let God get the glory out of it. And no, I'm not hiding it anymore. It's his story for his glory. My scars are his. By his, they're healed. That's what I want every person on this earth to get is that suffering is a joy and it's a gain for you and it's a gain for the kingdom of heaven. Satan thinks that he can destroy us by breaking us, by attacking us. Even as children, he'll attack you through other people's sin. He'll attack you through your own sin. But I serve a God who takes Satan's attacks and turns them back on him. And God is getting more glory out of me now and out of my life now because of the sin of other people against me and because of my own sin in my life. That's the power of my God. And that is the power of rejoicing in the face of suffering. Amen. I was just um, trying to look it up uh, for confirmation, but you said it was James mm -hmm. that was preaching. Thank right? you. What, what, who was it? Um, I'm trying to find it real quick. I didn't have a ton of. Um, I just know it was one of the depth, ones, but... one of the apostles that was crucified. Oh shoot! Yeah, I'm not totally sure. Um, I think it I was think James. It was... I'm almost positive it was James, but I could be wrong. I will. I will look it up and. Um, we'll put it in the description or like a comment. Or yeah, something. I'll do that. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know the story is, like, definitely <laughs> true of one of them. I just don't yeah. know who it was. Um, but honestly, there are countless stories mm -hmm. like that. I mean, there are stories of people who um, are were being martyred, like, even missionaries that were being martyred, and preached the gospel to those martyring mm -hmm. them, to the people killing them, to the soldiers. And oh there gosh. are stories of soldiers who literally are, like, killing these people and then are so moved by the people's own faith that they kneel down and are yeah. killed with them. I mean, it talks... Yeah, okay, so Eric Ludi Mentions um, one In of that them, sermon, yeah. he mentions James the Greater, the Apostle of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, he was beheaded. Mm -hmm. And his accuser, the reason that he's getting beheaded, his accuser comes to repentance and became a Christian and then died with him and then begged to be martyred with James yeah. he died with the man he, who accused him like how incredible is that and that that is what dying well looks like it's preaching Jesus until the very day you die yeah but what comes out of that why do people why what did they have that the church is missing? What did they have that so many Christians are missing? Faith. Well, yeah. <laughs> that. But they had Jesus at a level and they had healing mm -hmm. and they had peace at a level that we are missing. They had commitment. There's a difference. There's a huge difference between them and us. There's mm -hmm. a huge difference between Paul and Silas praising Jesus in prison mm -hmm. and Christians swearing on the road because someone cut in front of them. Mm -hmm. They had so much faith in God, in Christ, that their loyalty could not be severed. I mean, it's also humility. Mm -hmm. The humility to say, who am I? 
-hmm. to be angry about anything to, mm -hmm. to be boastful of anything um there's a passage that says like in corinthians first corinthians that's like that paul asks um why do you boast in anything you have as if it, as if it were not a gift like why do i get upset about losing anything mm -hmm. when i don't have anything nothing belongs to me it all belongs to him and he's the only thing that is worth gaining. That was the battle for Job's heart. Yeah. That was that was the battle that God was fighting for Job when Satan kept attacking. Yeah. Because that man was so faithful to God. Yeah. He was so faithful to God. And that's the battle that a lot of us will have to fight if you're willing to take up your cross and die to yourself that yeah. Unfortunately, that's a battle a lot of us will have to fight, but that's a very real part of Christianity. Well, it's to ask yourself, what am I willing to lose if For only Christ. I gain Christ? And it's hard. We're not saying it's easy. No. But one of my favorite quotes is from the God's Not Dead movie. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but it's simple. Yeah, it is. It is very simple. Um, and here's the thing. What I have experienced, I would not wish on my worst enemy, mm -hmm. but I want it so badly for everyone. And there's like this tearing of my heart where I want everyone to get it. I want you to see this, but I don't want you to have to experience it the way that I did. I pray that other people are stronger than me or are smarter than me and they grasp it before having to lose everything like surrender everything before you lose everything because it is only in surrendering everything and being willing to lose anything and everything including your own life to call even death your friend that is where you gain christ he literally says if you love anything, like Jesus says, if, if you love me, you, if you do not hate your mother and brother, if you don't, do not hate your own spouse, you do not love me. Because the parallel there is, you should be so willing to give up anything and everything here that it's as if you hate this world in comparison to how much mm -hmm. you love him. Obviously, it's not saying that you should actually hate this world. I mean, Christ calls us to love this world. He calls us to love those around us. He calls us mm -hmm. to love our enemies, let alone those close to us. Um, but it's saying that this paradigm should be so, th this gap should be so extreme of how much we love him in comparison to how much we love anything here that it's as if we hate the things here. Because we love him so much more. As if you have a choice between spending time with Jesus and spending time with someone you're really close with, what will be more important to you? Yeah. You know, and there have been points where I, I felt bad, honestly, because I wanted to just spend time with God. I wanted to just be with God, and I felt like, you know, there was someone that I should spend time with, and I should be, you know, investing in that. And I felt bad because I was like, should I be more invested in this relationship not that I'm not invested at all but should I be more so should I be in raptures over this person mm -hmm. should I be mm -hmm. what the world says is the amount that I should be invested yeah and then I read that verse and I was like oh my gosh I am right where I should be you know? amen praise God yeah. I want Jesus more I still love the relationships that I have yeah. but I want Jesus more and that's okay yeah. that's okay and it doesn't mean you're in the wrong place yeah. but that's just how it is our heart isn't longing for relationships of this world but it's longing for Jesus mm -hmm. so naturally we find in Jesus something that we're missing in other relationships of course when we're close to him we're gonna want him more yeah. you know so yeah it's crazy because I 
I definitely, like, I was a Christian, and I, I, I've loved Jesus for a long time. Um, I was a Christian two years ago, but I didn't have what I have now. I'm not saying if you don't have this, that you're not saved, that you're not a Christian. Like, if you have confessed him, like, salvation is, is very simple, but true surrender <laughs> is a lot deeper, and it goes a lot deeper. Um, but one of the biggest struggles for me for a long time is in my relationship. I, I really struggled with, do I love God as much as I love this man? Mm -hmm. And the reality is I didn't, I loved him more. And I remember praying about it and being like, God, is it okay? Like, I want to love you more than I love him. But if I'm honest, I don't. Because, like, he's physical and you're not. And it's really hard. I don't have that depth. And I can tell you, I sobbed earlier this year when I realized I had the realization as I was thinking about dating again. I cannot fathom loving a man on earth the way that I love Jesus. Mm. There is no world, there is no competition because the reality is the things, even the things that scared me the most before don't scare me anymore. The idea, the, the reason I will never find my joy in anything here is I've already experienced losing everything here. And so yeah, I might be blessed one day. I believe God has that blessing for me of giving me a family, of giving me a husband, of giving me these things, these beautiful things that he's calling me to. Um, but in my heart, in my head, I'm like, you know, nothing's for sure. That mm -hmm. man could die one day. I could yep. lose everything again. But I am bound and determined that it will not affect me the way that it did. Because and I love him more. Amen. And like, not that suffering isn't suffering. Not that it doesn't hurt. It's not like the apostles were excited about being dipped in vats of oil. <laughs> like, that wasn't fun. But they chose to rejoice. And they gained freedom in that. They were living for something that cannot be lost. Yeah. We cannot lose Jesus. We can lose everything else in this world, but we cannot lose Jesus. He is eternal. He is yeah. forever. And we will see him when we go to heaven. Yeah. And we will praise him when we go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And that is something you can build your life on. Mm -hmm. That's the point. That is which something you cannot you can build lose. Your life on? It's the only thing you can't lose. It's God. And so that's the only way you can have true joy, is if you build mm -hmm. your life on something that is immovable, mm -hmm. you build your joy and your confidence on something that you know you will not and cannot lose, that's when other things are added. That's mm -hmm. where I'm able to get joy now out of this life. Because I'm not saying I don't get joy out of things here. Like, there are beautiful things. Like, God has flipped my life around and blessed me with things that I I didn't even ask for, things that genuinely make me happy here I love my job I love where I live I have incredible friends like my life is completely flipped around I lost everything and now I've gained so much more than I ever imagined yeah. in such a short amount of time which again the power of God um but it's all built on the foundation of that which I cannot lose and even in that like I, I've gained friendships that it's like this friendship will last to eternity one day we get to praise Jesus together at his in feet. Heaven. Fully purified, fully with him. Oh, the awe and the wonder of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is what I long for. And like, praise God for every day on this earth. What a blessing it is to proclaim that message, to proclaim him. Um, again, you don't get to choose when you die. We are called to long for it. We are. We are called to long for heaven. There's a reason that Jesus talks so much about the kingdom of heaven, because that is the goal. But we're also called to live it out well. Yeah. But it, yeah, again, it starts here. Exactly. 
It gives me a whole new perspective of the parable of building your house on the sand versus building it on the yeah. rock. I honestly, I didn't take it to that extent of like, what is it? I've never thought in depth about that. I just yeah. thought it was clear. Like, okay, don't be stupid. Don't build it on something that can be shaken and fall. Don't, you know, but like, yeah. to apply it to where we are in life, do not build your life on the things that are so futile and worthy to fall away. Yeah. Don't build your life and what matters to you on the things that will wash away with the sea. Yeah. But build it on the things that will last forever and what will last forever more than God. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. He has been around since the beginning of time and will be around until the end of time and before and after exactly <laughs> he um, is and will always be mm -hmm. he is he That's just fine. is i mean technically yeah there's really no end of time end of the world sure yeah. but like <laughs> um yeah. no end of time that we know of but he will be forever so what more should we build our lives and our foundations on than that? You cannot put your hope in anything else. You can't put it in the place that you work or your friendships or your relationship or your family, yeah. where you live. Well, that, that you truly makes anything. you of this world. Mm -hmm. If you love anything of this world more than him, you are of this world. And what does the world do in suffering what does the world do when they're being dragged off they scream they cry they fall apart mm -hmm. so if that's how we act we're no different we don't have anything different if you want to be different if you want to be what Christ is calling you to be that is what you have to grasp is being unmovable in endurance through suffering because it starts today it doesn't have to be in a concentration camp it doesn't yeah. have to be a terrible tragedy it it starts in the day-to-day -day things because everyone's life is hard yes there are people out there who have these like crazy stories of tragedy mm -hmm. um but you don't have to discount how hard your own life is because other people have it worse. We all need this. We all desperately need the understanding of joy and suffering. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the concept that will change your life. Amen. Is saying Christ is more. To die is gain. Pick up your cross and follow him. Amen. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> he is so good. He is so worth it. He is. He is. He is. He is worth everything. The only thing that can fill the God sized hole. <laughs> Amen. Well, this was really good. This was really good. Yeah. I'm very passionate about this topic. I know, so me too. I feel like that was a little intense, but. Um, no, but that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. I, we both relate to it so heavily, you know, because we've both been to points where we almost gave up on this world and gave up on this life, but yeah, we have our purpose. And so many people have gotten to those points and they will see their purpose. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, so this has been really good. <laughs> Sorry, did you have something? Oh, to I was just going to say it's a blessing. Yeah. It's yeah. Blessing. This has been really good. Um, but we are out of time for today, so we're gonna get this up. We're a couple days late, but we'll make sure to link uh, Eric Ludy's sermon in the description box below, and we'll find the reference for what disciple that was that mm -hmm. um, was crucified and was preaching until yeah. he died. 
because that is incredible. So we also both um, have the hobby, both of us, of writing a lot of poetry. Oh my gosh, yes, I love poetry. Um, <laughs> and we both actually have written poems over mm -hmm. the last like month. Honestly, we both wrote them, I think, like the same day without even yep. realizing it. Mm -hmm. um, but on this exact concept. On uh, futility um, of things of this world. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to post this on our Instagram. Yep. Um, and I'm really excited for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is all such a such an intense topic in mm -hmm. our hearts we'll probably honestly talk about it more in weeks to come um, oh for because sure. it is a yeah. pretty it's a pretty intense topic that you can talk a lot about so mm -hmm. but yep pray that everyone has a good week and is blessed by god yep and we will see you all next thursday <laughs>